Now it's time to create the update user route API. So we have this folders all collapsed and nothing is in here. So we're going to go to the back end. So we have the API folder inside. We have routes. If we go to the user route, we see that we, we had a sample test route, right? So I'm going to add one more route here and that's going to be called router dot post and it's going to be used to update uh, the user. So we're going to have slash update. And then we're going to have the ID for suppose the, the person who you want to update. And I'm talking about in terms of this page. Now this is specifically to my account. So I have, I'll got, I'll have my own ID and I want to update this accordingly, right? The image, the username, the email, the password. Okay. So let's go back in here. And what we're going to do is of course it needs to have a function called uh, so, you know, we'll have a function which is called update user, but at the moment it's not there. So we'll create that. Um, so we'll have to get that from the controllers and we'll have to go to the user.controller.js and over here, we're going to have the function defined. So, uh, the update user is pretty simple and, um, you know, it all starts out with the export and what we're going to do is we're going to say const update user and we have rec uh, request and response and let's just create an empty body for now. And I'm also going to have the next, which is the middleware. We're going to handle it later, but right now it's just like that. Let's import it over here. So we'll have uh, the con from the controller. We have test. We also have update. Update. User. So you could see that update user is being exported and you are allowed to use it in here. Okay, so that's pretty good I, so far. Um, you know, nothing seems to be breaking and everything seems working. But the problem is I will have to verify to update the user. I can't just have everyone allowed to update my account, right? I'm, I only want authorization according to myself. And for that purpose, I want to use the cookie. Cookie that's saved inside of the browser. All right, so inside here, if we look at the, um, application we have this local storage and we have this and in the cookie we have this cookie um no it's not there but the local storage meaning meaning i have all this information right about my account so we'll have to use it so for there for that specific purpose we have a package and let's just close the uh let's just add another uh you know split screen or not in there but inside here let's just add one here so there and then over here, what we're going to do is this make sure it's in the root. If it's in the root, what you're going to do is you're going to have NPM I and it's going to, the package is called cookie parser to actually read the cookie in your backend. Once you do that, you are good to go. So you could just clear this out and let's also just remove it now. Okay. So let's just go back uh, to our place, which is over here. Okay, and what we're going to do is once we got the uh, cookie parser, we're going to have to import it. First of all, we have to go to the index.js file, which is over here. And over here, we're going to have the import. And we're going to say that we're going to import cookie parser from cookie parser like that. Great. And then on the bottom where you see this stuff, like, you know, the configuration, like, um, app dot, yeah, app dot use express dot JSON, you could actually have app dot use, and then we have cookie parser. That's all we have to do. Now we are able to read the cookie from our express backend. So we could go now back to the verify user. Uh, so essentially this is there, right? Um, and the thing is now we need to actually create, um, verify user.js. And this is going to be used to actually have the, you know, since I have to update the user, I have to verify whether the it's your, your own uh, account or not. Right. So for that particular purpose, I'm going to have to create another, uh, file inside the API in the utils. I'm going to create a, uh, file, which is going to be called verify user.js.
Okay, so once we have this verify user.js file opened up, we could now uh, start filling it up. So we have export const verify user or verify token um, because we have to verify whether it's the right token or not. And this is the token that's being uh, saved in the uh, you know local storage. So in the network, I mean in the in the application, there's actually something which is in the names of access. I don't see it right at the moment. I think it's not uh, signed in properly or something. But once I sign in, also these buttons are not no longer working. But let's just go to the sign in page. Sign in with Google. And uh, it should navigate bus over here. Now we'll go to this cookie. Okay. And we have this persist and key. And uh, we have shared storage. Okay. The thing is, we actually need to find the uh, access. I think I brought it before. I don't know. Uh, network. Google. Yeah, so this is our thing coming from Google, the response. And what I'm actually looking for is our cookie. Yep, there's this access token. So it's called access token. And this is in our headers, all right? And this is what we need. So it's na and the names of it is called access underscore token. So that's why we're trying to verify the token. So we're going to have the request and response and next. And let's just close it here. And the first thing we need is to verify the token. So we'll say token since it's actually being sent, right? So we have uh, request dot cookie cookies dot. And then we have the name of the cookie, which is access underscore token. All right. This is your cookie. And now what we want to do is we want to see if that to uh, cookie is right. So if I say if the token is not verified, I mean, if it's not, uh, you know, correct, what we could throw out is a single line return and it's say next use the middleware and use the function, which was error handler. If you remember, we created that in the error uh, page. So over there we have this uh, error.js file within the utils and we could say error handler and then we have 401 and then we have unauthorized. So that's uh, if the token doesn't match all right and if it does we'll use json web token um, to verify so we'll say jwt dot verify now in, of course you need J, jwt imported as well so let's just go up here and say import jwt from json web token okay so now we could just verify having the token which is from the cookie and we could actually have process.env.jwt secret. If you remember that there is an env file within our server and it has this uh, coding is fun secret key. So it's basically going to be verifying whether that token that's in the uh, browser is correct. And it's going to say, it's basically going to verify it. And we have error and user over here. So user basically will be the user ID. And over here, what we could say is, okay. So over here, what we could say is if an error persists, I mean, if an error exists, we could just have a single line return and say next uh, error handler again. And we could just say this time 403 and forbidden. All right. And the rest case is that if you get the request dot user, basically this is the ID of the user that's coming from the request. And this means that, you know, the verification is successful. And once the verification is successful, you could essentially have uh, one thing is missing here. And this is the round bracket. Okay. So once the verification is successful, 
you could actually go to the next. So next meaning I'll, ch I'll tell you what you mean. So this verify user is going to be called within this user.route. So you see over here, update user controller. Before that, we have to verify the user, whether uh, the user you know, has the authority. And this verify user, you could just import from verify user from utils verify user.js. All right. So first verify it. Verify you have access to updating the thing, right? If you, it's your own account or not. And if you are, then go to next right here. Get the user ID and go to the next. And then next means the next uh, function which is defined, which is in the route, you know, within the route update user. And the update is user is within the controller.js. So let's just finish this up. Okay, so now within the update user, um, which is a uh, function, we have to check whether the first the uh, request ID. Uh, so request.user.id, if that ID does not match the params ID, so request.params, because remember I said the ID of the user will be within the parameter. So we'll return um, another, uh, essentially we'll say, um, not that, we'll say, we'll say that, you know, we could just have the single line return. Uh, so return next error handler and we say uh, 401. And this is just like a error message for the user. So we could just have it as, you can only update your own account. Okay. That's perfect. Now that we have done that, we could have the try and catch like, like this. Okay. So in the try and catch, it's pretty simple. Um, once we only, uh, you know, we can access it. And if it does match, suppose if the user IDs match prams one and then the, um, the request cookie one, what you got. So then if it matches, we could use a try catch and do the following. We say request the body uh, and we get the password. We have to first, we have to check the password and see. Essentially, if you look into the slash profile, if you click on there, this password, uh, when you write the new one, you don't want it stored like that. You want to encrypt it again. So if the password is valid, right? If you're trying to update that, so we recommend to have the request.body.password and we'll be crypted again using hash sync and then request.body.password and we'll have it for 10 rounds of salt. And this is great. Again, um, it's going to be encrypted within and then we could just save it within the database and we use bcrypt.js again. So perfect, perfectly done. After that, uh, once you have that, once you have the, you know, the, the process done, uh, which is the encryption process, you could now save the user. We could have the user model, which is updated user, you could say updated user, and then you could say await. Once I use this await, this means automatically I have to put uh, async over here. So I'll put asynchronous a like that. Okay, so await, and then we'll have user dot. Okay, now since I just typed in user, it just imported the model user model as well user model dot js will just put in okay and over here we'll have find by id and update so this one this one and then what we'll do is we have to pass in first of all we have to pass in the params id okay and this is a uh, this is a way to actually update it so find by ID and update, we get the ID from the params and then we have to update it. And we use the set since actually it's not always compulsory. We'll, we need to update every single field. Suppose if I just want to keep my username and I just want to change my email address. All right. And I just want the password to be changed and I don't want the image to be changed. So where, uh, for that particular, uh, solution, we use the set, uh, keyword. And this is, dollar set and we say that whatever's in here we only want to give or, or say uh, uh, like whatever's uh in the request.body but that's actually a mistake since this could actually give access to people who use uh, like your api route within insomnia and then they could uh, become admins without you know all the fields will be open up within the database, not just these four fields that you see over here, but every field would be open up and this could cause problems and, and, and special security features concerns will be happening and ultimately could make 
uh, your database hacked. So don't do this, but have something like which username and uh, have it request dot body dot username and the same thing email has to be updated and just type in request dot body dot email and the same thing goes for password so request dot body dot password and the avatar which is the image so avatar and then request dot body dot avatar so now all of this is done which is really great uh and over here what we want to do is one special thing is we have to type in new true if we don't, it won't even save the updates to our database. We have to make new call in true to make sure that this is saved within our database. And once it's done, we don't want the password to be returned from the um, from the JSON response and displayed to our user. So we could actually put that on a side again, just like how we doing how we did before throughout this series. So password, and we say uh, rest. We could say all the rest spread operator though the password just take out so we decrypt i mean destructure it and we say the updated user dot underscore doc and this is you know coming from there the response and you'll say response dot status 200 and we'll say json and rest and this is just going to give you the rest and in the uh, in the catch part you could just have the error handled like that perfection okay so now that everything is done this seems to be 100 percent complete and I can't wait to try this out. So, you know, this, uh, this update user um, function is completed. Now we could complete uh, the test call. So over here, what we could do is make sure first the thing is on. Okay, so we could see that uh, the app crashed for some reason. And it's saying that verify user, the, the requested module verify user does not provide an export named verify user okay so let's go and see verify user and we see that uh export const verify token okay i think what we did over here is we had to say um verify token okay and uh um you know it's it is exporting but for for in terms of the controller i mean in here we have verify token Yes, I think it's uh, what I believe is that in the route we have um, verify user and then we have to type in verify token here. Okay, so this is verify user and then within it will say verify token, import verify token from verify user, got it. And we're getting the function which is verify token, got it. So my bad there, now we fixed it. It should not give us this issue again. So I actually don't have to turn off the server. It's, it, you know, it tells me the issues and then we could just fix it and then it starts turning on and working again. Let's use Thunder Client. So let's go here and Thunder Client and let's go and see one of our old requests that we made earlier and just copy it. And what's going to happen is that we have to go to the body and we're going to go in the form of JSON. So let me just cross this out. Okay, so the thing is, it's not auth anymore. Well, it's ABI and it's user and it's update, I guess. So let's just verify if this is the correct way. So if we go to the, uh, if we go to the update user, I mean, if you go to the route, it says slash update and then the uh, slash update, right? So essentially, if we go to the index.js file, here we have slash API slash user, and then we have the user router. So we are in the user router. So the user router is here. And you know we have slash update. So that's perfect. Uh, so just go back into the place and we say API slash user slash update. And we actually have to pass in an ID over here. So this is make uh, we'll have to make sure that this is saved somewhere. I'm just gonna put in a text file for now um, because I'm gonna normally go back to it. So let's just have this user here, and we're gonna put an ID within it. So like just remember that there's an ID afterwards. Uh, but right now what we have to do is authenticate ourselves because we're not logged in. So this is first of all, API slash auth slash login. Okay. And I'm going to log in with this account and I'm assuming that this is the existing and it's post. So let's send it. Now it says over here that this is not found. So we have error slash API slash auth slash login. API slash auth slash login. I think um, the path looks correct post get okay so let me just see 
Okay, so let's look at the route. So in the user controller, I mean in the index.js we have API slash auth slash and then auth controller was somewhere over here. So auth controller is over here, and we have uh, a yeah sign up sign in. Basically, what sign in? What I'm looking for. Okay, I think I understand. The route is somewhere. Uh, I understand. I didn't write the. It's called. It's called. Uh, lo, sign in. Called sign in. Okay, let's see. Okay, still not there. Sign in like that. Let's see. Still not there. Okay, there's got to be some issue, and I'm gonna have to go to the auth dot controller. Auth dot controller or auth dot auth dot controller. And then we have in the routes we have auth dot route. So we have yeah. So we have sign in. It's like that. So let's go back again. And it's essentially API slash auth slash sign in. It should work like this. I mean it's a post method. And let's sign sign in. Perfect. We're signed in. Awesome. And we got all of this response back. So uh you could see that there's this image. This is coming. Um, there is this, you know, ID, and this is a default image that's, uh, you know, I set, and there's this ID and username, and, and now I'm authenticated. If you look into the um, cookies, so if you look into the uh, other part, let me just have this closed or something. You could see over here I have a cookie, and this is the access token, and you could see this is the value. All right, so now let's go and try to update this thing. So what is the response here? We have an email which is harris one at gmail.com, and the username is harris one. Let's change the email and the username. Okay, so let's go and first let's go to this API, which is the other one, which is let's just create another uh, one minute. So yeah, Thunder Client. So let's just create another request. And over here we're gonna have is, so this is authenticated. Now we could go here and just copy this entire path. This is our now API route. So post means to change, okay? So post, we have to make it sure it's post because we're changing something. And within the body, you have to pass in the changes. So what do you wanna change? You wanna change the username and you want it to be, instead of Harris, one you want it simple as uh rs updated all right and we also want the email so email and we want the email change to rs updated at gmail gmail.com okay so now this is the update that i'm doing okay of course the id has to be passed in so let's get the id from here so remember this is the id and we're gonna copy this, and we're gonna go here, and we're gonna make sure that this ID matches. Okay, so we can't paste it like that, but we could paste it like this. Okay, still can't, wait. Okay, so go back here, just copy this, Control C, go back here, and Control V. Okay, so now let's see if it updates or not. Send, and it's okay, 200 okay. The username is updated, the email is updated, the ID is the same. And if I try to update it, suppose with another wrong one, and I say one, two, uh, two uh, you know, the e username, it's going to give an error. A connection was forcibly closed by a peer. So uh, there's an edge case here, uh, and we have to check that out. But other than that, I mean, it's basically working. So let me go back here. Uh, so it just has to say, you know, the message uh, that, you know, it's a wrong unauthorized or something. But I guess the uh, server turned off or crashed. <laughs> Great. So over here it says that, uh, yeah, it says error handler is not defined at update user. So if we go to update user, which is uh, update user, it's got to be over here somewhere. Update user, update user, update user. It's in the it's in the controller user dot controller, and over here we don't have update uh, error handler so where's error handler there it's not defined on the top nope uh, so we'll have to import error handler could have just imported it from utils and error.js now it shouldn't give us the issue unfortunately i turned off the server myself um, and now it's logged in it's running 
and let's go back here and let's see over here so now you could see that this is the update right so the update worked but remember when i said i wanted to change it with some random e email uh, id incorrect one and you said it only could update on your account so perfect uh let's go back here and do the fixed one and i just want it back to updated and i want i mean i just want it very simple let's have it just is my name and the email would be this so let's just send and make sure that the id is saved as correct as well okay we have internal server error it says plan executor it says uh duplicate key error collection okay so it seems like there's some duplication existing within the database so what we're going to do is yeah the email is already there so that's a really great sign that you know the errors are being caught so we're going to just say harris new and we're just going to say harris new okay this is now unique and it should be updating perfection and it's going to be reflecting within the database as well thank you so much for watching this video and now we're going to move on to the next parts of this application so stick around